Okay, in this part of the course, we're gonna to start to really look seriously at the materials that you're going to need to make your hempcrete insulation successful. And that begins with a good grind of hemp herd. Right now, there actually are no standards for what hemp herd for hempcrete uh, should look like. Um, a lot of established building materials have standards so that you know if you're buying uh, that type of material that it's going to match the specifications you need. That doesn't exist with hemp right now. So let's look at, at the range of materials that you can get when you order hemp and we'll try to show you uh, what's good, what's not so good and, uh, and what we would think of as an ideal mix. So the hemp herd uh, comes from the core of the plant. The fiber has been stripped off the plant at this point and the hemp herd is usually in quite large chunks at that point. And so it gets chopped up uh, in various ways. Different processors use different machinery, but the, the way it's ground up is very important to the success of your hempcrete insulation. So we're gonna start with this grind right here. And this would be an example of what I would call a very fine grind. So there's a lot of very small pieces in, in this mix. Um, there's a lot of particulate, there's a lot of dust, um, and this is not ideal for your hempcrete insulation because what a lot of little pieces means is that there's more surface area that needs to be coated with lime, and that means that for the same volume of a hempcrete made with this herd, you're going to have more binder than hemp, and that's going to make the mix more dense, and it's going to make it more conductive, and therefore uh, a lesser insulation value. So if you see a mix that has a lot of very fine pieces, um, that may not be what you want to get. Now, having said that, we've used this particular grind. Um, you have to adjust your recipe a little bit. It will work, but ideally you wouldn't be working with something uh, as fine as what we see here. At the other end of the spectrum is a very coarse mix. And so you can see when I look at this mix, uh, the pieces are very large. There's a lot of uh, length to them. They're very thick. It's a very sort of chunky mix. In a lot of ways, this is really great for insulation because you're sort of maximizing uh, the amount of hemp and you're minimizing the amount of binder. But what you'll find is if all the pieces are really large like this, it gets hard to pack this into corners, into small areas. Um, and you'll have to actually add a bit more binder because there's less places where um, all of these pieces touch and so you're relying on more binder uh, to surface area to make that work. So again, this is a mix that we have used. It will work, um, but it's a little more coarse uh, than would be ideal. Now back here we have a mix and I'm not sure what the process is by which it ends up like this but this seems to happen uh, with some mixes that what you get are a lot of very long, very thin pieces of hemp herd. And this starts to look more like a, a typical sort of wheat straw or rice straw. Um, and what you've lost here is the, is the thickness of the hemp. So remember that, that it's all the little air pockets in the chunky pieces of hemp that are giving you the insulation value. If it's been stripped down, so it's just a lot of really thin fibers, Again, you're gonna need more binder and you're not trapping as much air. So this is a less, uh, less than ideal type mix. And in fact, I would avoid using this altogether. This is, a, this is a, a grind of hemp that I would not wanna use for hempcrete insulation. And then finally, uh, over here is a mix that, um, that we've used quite a bit. And it's a really nice blend of uh, bigger pieces so there are some of the, the longer, bigger chunks that we're finding over in the, uh, in the course mix. Uh, there's a bit of fine stuff and a really good sort of gradation of particles from, uh, from the smaller size up to the bigger size. There's also uh, a little bit of fiber mixed in here. A little bit of fiber is actually really great. It helps the whole mix bind together. Um, but too much fiber um, becomes problematic. It clumps up the, uh, the mixer and it makes really wet, dense uh, clumps of fiber in your mix. And again, that reduces your insulation value. So if you can find uh, a grind that has this kind of distribution of particles, that's great. If you refer to the PDF, you'll see that there's some information there on particle uh, gradation and the sizes that you're looking for. 
but essentially you want to find something that uh, that's not too big and not too small but in fact like this mix here is sort of a, a medium grade and is just right for your hempcrete insulation. So, while we were mixing the hempcrete for this project, we happened to come across a bag of hemp that even though it came from a supplier whose hemp we really like, we did find a bunch that was really full of fiber and had hardly any hemp herd in it. So, if you come across uh, a patch in your hemp like this, or if you happen to see an entire uh, supply of hemp that has this much fiber in it, this is not going to work for your hempcrete. When you put it in the mixer, that fiber is going to soak up all your binder. It's going to turn into sort of a big wet lump and it's just not going to turn into good hempcrete. So if you see this, you don't want to use it. 